William Eklund completed his first full season in the NHL. How did they compare to other Sharks greats in their first full seasons? Your Locked On Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, welcome to Locked on Sharks, the premier hockey podcast covering your favorite team in the Bay Area. My name is J.D. Young, um, editor-in-chief, head writer, the owner of The Reef. Go check that out on my uh, YouTube or on my Twitter page if you want to know more information. Uh, thank you for making Locked on Sharks your first listen, probably part of the Locked on Network. We cover your team every day, and if you want to be in every day or all you have to do is just follow wherever you get podcasts or you can watch this on youtube as well and today we're going to be talking about slip repeat himself william Eklund. uh we're going to be doing a season review look at how his first full season in the nhl went and compare him to logan couture's first full season tomas hurdle's first full season and timo meyer's first full season and then talk about kind of what's next for william Eklund as he continues uh his growth and development and what we can kind of expect to see him over the next year and couple seasons uh, for Eklund. So before we get into all that, do want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Down the Game Time app, create an account and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. So, slip repeat himself, William Eklund finished his first full season. So let's dig into the numbers behind the season. Um, so. Eklund, who still has two years left on his ELC. Um, he played 80 games this year. Uh, that was the second most on the Sharks, um, only behind one Fabian Zetterlin, who played all 82 games. Um, so we can probably put to rest the he won't be able to hold up for a full season. He missed two games. One was a due to an illness, and one was literally a game-time decision that he just wasn't quite healthy for and made it back in for the next game. So. We can, I think, safely put to bread the Eklund's body can't hold up in a full season. Um, he had 16 goals, 29 assists, 128 shots, played 18 minutes and 46, 40 seconds of t- uh, time on ice at night. Um, Corsi four forty five oh five. So whenever he was on the ice, the Sharks sh- uh, shot attempts, he controlled 45%. Goals for 36%, which is something that um, we will need to see some improvement out of. Um, of his 16 goals, eight of them came on the power play, eight of them on even strength. Um, there, and of his assist, um, 20 even strength assists, eight uh, power play assists, and also one shorthanded assist as well. Um, so, Eklund, you know, well diversified in his scoring, maybe a little bit more heavy on the power plays mm-hmm. goal scoring, but still able to kind of see where, where he's getting his scoring from. Also, led the team in game winning goals this year, uh, with five game winning goals. Um, so good for him. Clutch, clutch Eklund there. Um, his athletic card, um, so it has him as a negative two forecast rating, uh, market value of 2.7 million, of course, on his ELC right now. Um, you know, again, this team was very bad. That's the context with all players that we talk about is just how poor this team was. So um, with some of the analytics, it's going to drag the numbers down just because, again, um, this team was very poor. Uh, <laughs> so... As for the evolving hockey card, um, so he played first line minutes. Oops, uh, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Uh, First line minutes, 57 percentile. uh, Offensively, 50th percentile, 68th percentile. Defensively, um, defense, again, with the analytics, you have to kind of keep it, you know, don't get too high, don't get too low because there's a lot of kind of factors that go into it. But um, his goals above replacement were above positive. Expected goals were above replacement. A little bit below zero um, was positive on the power play, positive shorthanded, did a great job of taking penalties without drawing, and then maybe drew a couple, uh, didn't draw as many. So, good job of not taking penalties. Um, Probably could have drawn a few more more penalties, but um, 68 shorthanded minutes this year. So, which is kind of like a second unit uh, penalty killer. Um, And 213 power play minutes, uh, 1,162. even strength minutes there. So I think overall keeping um, in mind 
how bad this team was, I think you have to kind of call William Eklund's first season a success, right? Hitting that kind of 45 point mark. Um, you know, you kind of, it's weird. You kind of look at like 45 is, is a kind of a big number. Cause you're almost at like half a point per game right there. You're over half a point per game. Um, 60, I think is kind of the next big plateau. And then that 82 where you're over a point per game. So, um, but overall, I mean, we saw a lot of growth and development from, from Equin this year. Um, you know, we, we saw him play every game, play a lot of minutes, handle some adversity, kind of moving up and down the lineup, you know, got to play center a little bit. I, I think even though strong start to his center career, um, I still think, I think wing is we saw after his move back to the wing, I think he was a, had a much better kind of finish to the season. Um, and if I think maybe if he played wing the entire season, um, he's probably over 50 points just because I get him. I think, Playing center is such a difficult position, and I, I you're already worrying about trying to do so many other things um, offensively and defensively on the wing, and then trying to add these center um, responsibilities and faceoffs and all that stuff. I, I think it might have been just a little bit too much on his plate for there. We'll see kind of what happens going forward, but I still think Eklund is long term should be a wing, especially with um, the potential pieces the Sharks are adding into the pipeline. I just I think Eklund's best fit is at a wing, and we saw him play his most dynamic hockey playing out at the wing. Um, and you know I think a, a big reason for his success, especially later on, was kind of taking that that first line minutes on the Lun line with. Granlin and with Zetterlin. Um, and we talked about last, you know, on, on Monday's episode, kind of Zetterlin, how he did a great job this year and kind of took advantage of the opportunities. But you saw, especially at the end of the season, when those those three guys were playing together, um, yes, these sharks were a one line kind of unit, but that line meshed really well because of everyone's strengths and skills. And, you know, Granlin kind of being the setup person, right. And kind of being the crafty veteran, you, you saw Phillips or Fabian Zettelin being, you know, kind of this bit of a sniper on that line and um, the big body forecheck. But then you saw Eklund was kind of the straw that stirred the drink, right? How many times is he creating space and creating opportunity and providing, you know, great feeds to guys and, um, getting more skilled guys around Eklund is going to be one of my Greer's biggest, you know, things he needs to do, whether it's this year, hopefully, and can, in the future. Uh, he is on, you know, Mike Greer is on his way to doing that with high draft picks um, and a, you know, much better, you know, improving prospect pool. But we, we saw Eklund playing with skilled players, what he can do when, um, he doesn't have to kind of carry the load on the line and um, just keep that in mind here in the back of your head as we dig into how he played in it, uh, kind of comparing his seasons to Kotor, to Timo Meyer, and to Tomas Hurdle. Just kind of keep that thought in the back of, of your head here. But um, I think overall, though, as Sharks fans, this is the echo that you wanted to, that you're hoping to see. And again, 21 he'll turn 22 at the beginning of the season um the future is is bright for Eklund and I'm I, I I think he's going to be a star in the, the NHL um you're kind of already seen where he's potentially the you know kind of the face of the franchise right now um and you're seeing even you know after the trade deadline how much stuff was Eklund you know in the media right where he's even the NHL is kind of tweeting about Eklund or, you know, posting about Eklund, you know, how often were the sharks kind of trying to put Eklund out there as, as the face of the franchise. And I think right now, um, you know, I think it's, it's, it's him, right. Who, who else is it? Is it, you know, Mario Ferraro, who's, you know, a lot of people love Mario Ferraro, but you have to have some, some pizzazz behind your game, I think to be, um, to be the face of the franchise. And I think right now, um, you know, with hurdle gone, Brent Burns, Eric Carlson, you know, Logan Gator's injury. Like you, I think you point to Eklund as being kind of the face of the franchise, at least until Smith and Cele hopefully Celebrini arrive um, at, at some point too. But um, you, you see, you saw a definite push to try to, I think, get Eklund out there front and center. And I think that really kind of capped off with 
the Sharks, you know, with his hat trick overtime um, wins. So, yeah, um, still needs to work. You know, we'll we'll talk about kind of what needs he needs to continue to work on and, and kind of what where he's going to continue to progress. But um, overall, I think you have to feel really strong about Eklund's progression this year, despite all the circumstances around the team. So uh, we'll get into kind of how he compares to Krator and Hurdle and Timo Meyer here uh, in just one minute. Passion, drive, and patience, the formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. There are over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for with the eBay Guarantee Fit. Your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guarantee fit only available to U.S. customers. And if you want to go get tickets for... Maybe you want to go catch an NBA game. You want to go catch the Giants. You want to go catch the A's. Whatever it is, concerts, game time has got you covered. They have killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets. Um, thing I love about game time is you know exactly what your seats are going to look like. They have views from your seats, so you know you're getting a great seat every time you go to check out. And when you go to check out, all in pricing, you know exactly what you're going to pay. Nothing worse than going to get checked out, going to check out and you get slammed with a bunch of fees. You don't have to worry about with the game time, especially with their all in pricing. So take the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets with game time, download the game time app, create an account and use code locked on NHL for $20 off your first purchase. Uh, terms apply again, create an account and redeem code locked on NHL L O C K E D O N NHL for $20 off download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, so how does Eklund's first season kind of compare to some of the Sharks' greats in Logan Couture, Tomas Hurdle, and Timo Meyer? Um, and again, how do how are those guys that set up for success? I think is going to be a big thing to look at. So uh, we're going to kind of go in chronological order with, when these guys were drafted, um, and we're going to start with one Logan Couture, who um, in his and the nice thing about this is. All these guys, their first seasons were kind of first full seasons where they're age 21 years. So um, all these guys kind of played a little bit before him. Most of them kind of played a little bit more games than um, Eklund. Eklund, who played 17 games. I think Gautor was around 25. Hurdle was in the 30-ish range. And I think all these guys had played a little bit beforehand. But um, so Logan Gautor, 79 games um, in his uh, 2010 to 2011 Look at that baby face couture if you're watching or on, on YouTube. But he had 32 goals, 24 assists that year, 253 shots on goal, uh, averaged 17.49 time on ice. Corsi for 56.15, goals for 62.86. Um, couture was second in the Calder that year behind Jeff Skinner. Um, and yeah, he was really good and really dominant. Um, playing first line minutes was 90th percentile player, 82 percentile offensively, 87th percentile defensively. Um, you know, saw some shorthanded time, not as much power play time as as Eklund this year, but uh, again, those teams were as well. Again, just keep in mind who Eklund played with, um, compared to, and we'll talk about who. Couture played with, but um, Couture had arguably, I think, other than Jeff Friesen, uh, or no, Pat Floon, excuse me, uh, Pat Floon has a rookie record for Sharks uh, points in a season, um, but I would argue Logan Couture's season was, you know, as a skater, uh, one of the best, if not the best rookie season we've ever seen from Couture, or from a, from a Sharks player. Um, yeah, he came out and was as advertised for for the San Jose Sharks. So Couture set the bar really high, um, and if, you know Eklund, different team. So again, hang on to that thought. 
Tomas Hurdle, age 21, season 14, 15, uh, played 82 games, full season that game, uh, 13 goals, 18 assists, 145 shots on goal, 1433 average time on ice, 53.95 Corsi 4. 48.72 goals for, um, and his stats look much similar to Eklund's. Um, you know, I didn't play any, basically no shorthand time, kind of was that tweener between the second and third unit on the power play. Um, also kind of played less minutes overall, kind of playing second line minutes. 50 second uh, percentile, 48th defensively, 39, uh, 48th percentile offensively, 39th percentile defensively. Um, but again, right, I think was, um, you know, kind of more in line to to what we had, what we see from um, from Eklund. Timo Meyer is age 21 season, the 17, 18 year, uh, played 81 games, 21 goals, 15 assists, 210 shots on goal. 1452 uh, average time on ice, 52.56 Corsi four, and 52.22 goals for some more goals, less assists. We know Timo Meyer um, is a much more prolific uh, scoring machine than than Eklund, um, but points pretty similar. Um, you know, again, Eklund playing more ice time, also Eklund playing you know kind of more on the shorthanded. Um, you know, Eklund also played more power play time and even strength time. Timo Meyer was 75th percentile offensively, 71st, uh, or 75th percentile uh, overall, kind of that tweener again between first and second line minutes, 71st percentile offensively, 42nd uh, defensively, uh, was a monster at drawing penalties um, there. So all those guys, you know, I think there's very comparables. I, I think especially the hurdle Eklund, very comparable. Timo did score more goals, um, but still Eklund ended up with more assists. And then Couture kind of way, way ahead. But something to keep in mind is who they played with. So I pulled up Dauber Prospects. They have this really cool tool where you can actually pull up your players' mo like kind of most common line mates. Um, so I pulled it up for all, all four, all four players. So Logan Couture in his rookie season played um, 19% of the time with Ryan Klo and Danny Heatley. Uh, Ryan Klo was a good player. Uh, Danny Heatley was a great player. Um, he also played with, uh, like, he, Klo was staple to Couture, right? If you, you know, it was Ryan Klo, Couture, and Ben Ferrero. Klo, Couture, some guy named Joe Pavelski. Those were the three most common lines that Logan Couture played on. Fast forward to Tomas Hurdle. 30% of the time he played with Joe Pavelski and Joe Thornton. I know those guys. <laughs> uh, Joe Thornton, one of the greatest NHL players of all time. And Joe Pavelski, one of the, you know, uh, yeah, you guys know Joe Pavelski. And then next common was a uh, little under 11%, Couture, Hurdle, Patrick Marlowe. Again. Uh, and then less about 6% of the time hurdle Chris Tierney and Tommy Wingles um, kind of those third line minutes, but see hurdle playing with those guys like Pavelski, Thornton, Couture, Marlowe, big names, right? Um, Timo Meyer, his rookie season, 20, basically 22% of the time uh, played with Joe Pavelski and Joe Thornton, which is again, just wonderful. Um, Timo Meyer was on the Tomas hurdle plan. Then he played 12% of the time with Jonas Donskoy uh, and Joe Pavelski. And then 11% of the time he played with uh, Kevin LeBanc and Chris Tierney. So our sweet William Eklund. Uh, much more convoluted lines now um, because of all the Sharks that are playing, et cetera, et cetera. His most common line mates this year were Luke Cunning and Philip Zadina, uh, about 10% of the time. And then right under that, so that was at 119 minutes. And then at 117, basically 118 minutes, uh, he played with Granlin Zetterlin um, as well. Then he also played about 100 minutes with Hurdle um, and Zetterlin. So just something to keep in mind um, when you're kind of talking about his season. And yes, a lot of like the analytics and stuff and scoring numbers and stuff. Um, those are kind of based on your performances, but um, playing with Joe freaking Thornton, um, 
right? We Joe Thornton basically made a career out of uh, Joe Thornton got Kevin LeBanc paid twenty million dollars basically because he played on a line with him. You know, um, Joe Thornton made a lot of careers, um, and yes, playing with Joe Pavelski, playing with like he played with great players too. Joe Thornton also made a lot of people very rich as well. So um, it's just something to keep in mind with Ekman when you kind of digest some of these numbers. It's just that um, a lot of these other Sharks players, they just they had great players to play with. And no slight to Cunning or Zadina and stuff like that. Those guys just aren't Joe Pavelski and Joe Thornton um, in their prime years, or at least kind of the you know tail end of their primes in Joe Thornton's cases. So uh, we'll kind of talk about what's next for, for Eklund um, as he continues his growth and development and kind of the expectations going forward. So we'll get to that here uh, in just one second. I'll admit it, I have a bit of a competitive side, but that's where Monopoly Go comes in. Um, if you want to team up with friends, you can do that for time tournaments where you work together to build up for each other's boards. The more you win together, the more awesome prizes you unlock. And there's so much to get. Unlock stickers you can trade with friends to complete albums for big prizes. They have cool new playing pieces to travel boards with. Hilarious emojis for taunting friends when you smash their buildings or heist their vaults. Plus, Monopoly Go feels new and exciting every day with constantly changing tournaments and challenges. A ton, including unique mini games. They got Digging for Treasure. They have a Robot Pachinko Machine. There's always new timed events where you can help win big, like massive multipliers for everything you win or rent frenzies. There's always something fun to discover in Monopoly Go. So get off the couch um, and go download it now free on the App Store or on Google Play. Game on. All right. Um, what's next for for our friend Slippery Pete? Um, I think just continue your growth and development, right? And for the Sharks, right? I think uh, you know we're gonna have there's going to be changes with with new coaching staff and whatever the Sharks do in the front office, and you know hopefully and then continue the infusion of talent, whether it's Will Smith or free agent signings or whomever the, the Sharks add. But I think. Again, like we saw with those other players like Couture's um, and Hurdles and Timo Myers, putting your young players in a position to succeed by putting them around other good to great players. And yes, the Sharks are lacking good to great players right now, but putting those guys in a position to succeed that way, um, I think is the best recipe for his continued growth and development. We saw again at the end of the season, right? You know, kind of especially after the trade deadline. Um, just how important Eklund was and how he kind of took on this role, you know, and there's a couple games that stick it out to me, right? The, that Saturday after the trade deadline, you know, when it was the Sharks won two to one um, against the Sens, right? And it was Eklund creating for Thomas Borla, right? Seeing that, that, that glimpse of the future right there. Um, that, that image of Eklund and Bordo kind of celebrating, right? Um, and then of course the, the hat trick game, like, him stepping up in these big moments. And the hope is we continue to see more and more stuff like that from Eklund, especially as the team gets better and, you know, the pressure starts to build that he kind of builds these little clutch habits. That's the thing we loved about Joe Pavelski, right? And I don't want to compare the two, but Joe Pavelski had a knack for scoring big time goals when the Sharks needed it most. And again, Eklund, the Sharks didn't win a lot of games this year, but Eklund, when they did win games, Eklund was usually in the mix for, for them winning games, right? You go back to the Islanders game, scoring in overtime. Um, great, great feed from Mikel Granlin. Great, you know, kind of nice screen there. But Eklund's the one who gets the shot off before the, the horn goes off, right? Um, just those knack for those kind of big time performances in key moments. And that is what you hope, hope that he's kind of building and kind of building that confidence now that when, when the Sharks need him and hopefully they're playing for playoff games and, you know, kind of starting to, 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 to put this thing together that he's kind of have that in the back of the head. But I think though for Eklund, right. Is okay. 45 points. Um, your first season. Great. Can we get to 60? I think that is, that's again, that bar, that 60 point bar uh, for, for Eklund next year. And, 
you know, we, we saw, I think the shot has improved more than we kind of expected right from, from him. And I think it's improved quicker than we, I think a lot of us expected. Um, we, we kind of pictured Eklund as a playmaker first, but Eklund's got a, a shot and we, we saw how often on the power play, he was kind of the guy where they were trying to feed the puck to. And, you know, yes, when more talent comes onto the roster, maybe Eklund isn't that guy anymore, but then maybe with more talent on the roster, Eklund's great feeds aren't just going to going to waste. Right. And we we've seen him create beautiful feeds, especially from behind the net. And I think he needs to kind of build on that and kind of add to that repertoire and, you know, add that wraparound that we saw a little bit at the end of the season last year, but like, continue to kind of grow his game, get better in, in the defensive zone. I think muscle wise, we're, we're kind of hitting that point, right? Where I think he's kind of NHL ready or kind of, you know, he's not NHL ready. He's played an entire season, but I think we're kind of hitting that point with his frame where he's probably going to be what he's going to be. Maybe he fills out a little bit more here, but um, you know, I think it's, it's just going to continue to grow that confidence and that consistency, right? You can't have those lapses where you go, and a couple games here and there where you're not scoring, and then maybe you get a bunch of points. But again, I think that that consistency for Eklund, night in, night out, shift in, shift out. Um, and again, just having more talent around um, around him. I, I think again, considering what what was around him, what the season was, I think you have to grade Eklund's season as an A just because of um, what <laughs> just everything around, right? Um, Right. It's, it's, the team was bad. We know the team was bad. And, um, but yeah, I think there's all the stuff there, all the stuff there for a, a star in the making for Eklund. And I think, I think the Sharks nailed this pick with a seventh overall, overall pick in that draft. Um, and I think Eklund is going to continue to deliver on the expectations that he sets on himself and that we, as, as his fans kind of, set on him you know when they drafted him and as he's continued to kind of grow and develop um it's been a long and winding road for Eklund, but we are starting to get rewarded by it and uh yeah i'm i'm excited to see him kind of continue uh to do what he's been doing this winnipeg uh Avs series is drunk anyway um <laughs> sorry i have it on the background but um that's gonna be it for me today we got a couple fun interviews uh kind of planned here um for the rest of the week so uh we'll, we got another draft profile coming up we got something fun kind of coming up as well i'm gonna keep that under wraps but you'll see um and then we also have we got the draft lottery next week um plenty of good stuff make sure you guys are following wherever you get podcasts and of course you can watch on YouTube as well. You want to check out my written work, um, the reef um, at ghost. So it's kind of like a sub stack thing. You get a nice little newsletter. Every time I pop it out, um, there's a free subscription. Go check that out. Or if you want some more articles, especially if you like kind of, uh, you know, clips and scouting, you know, kind of checking out the prospects, there's a paid subscription, but I uh, go check it out. The free version helps out. If you want to chip in, it's five bucks a month um, for the, the paid one. Um, you're the best. But anyway, go check that out. Um, it's on my Twitter. I'll probably repost it like every day for a while. So um, you can also follow the show on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Locked on Sharks. Uh, follow me on Twitter at my fry hole. Till tomorrow. Bye, friends. 